kakapo have also been called the owl parrot. As they evolve to become nocturnal, their eyes gradually move towards the front of their head, improving low light vision. Like owls, kakapo also have a distinctive circle of feathers around each eye. These facial discs act like radar dishes, collecting sound waves and focusing them towards the bird's ears. One characteristic they share with other parrots is intelligence. Each bird exhibits an individual personality. Isolated on the remote islands of New Zealand for millions of years, kākāpō have evolved to live in the slow lane. We don't actually know for sure how long kākāpō live, but we think it's about 60 minimum. So he's got a long time to go. It's thought they may live a hundred years. If they do, it would make them the world's longest living bird. There are over 350 species of parrot in the world, but the kākāpō has taken a path unlike any other. What evolutionary forces created this extraordinary animal? On remote Whenua Ho, Codfish Island, kākāpō still face a desperate battle for survival. Once widespread throughout New Zealand, these kākāpō no longer exist on the mainland. Just three tiny offshore islands, free from introduced predators, provide a safe environment. Less than 160 kākāpō are left, and half of the population lives here. Their distinctive mating behaviour hasn't helped their survival. Male kākāpō sit in a hollow. They boom loudly and wait for a female to be attracted to their call. They also use a loud wheezing call named chinging. With numbers so low, the kākāpō's breeding strategy produces far less certain outcomes than the lifetime pair bonding of the tākahe. Males now compete for a small number of females. Many males don't get to mate at all. The situation is still very, very dire. They're still critically endangered. The population has tripled since recovery efforts began, but we still only have 154 birds. For any animal, that's an incredibly low number. These cute and fluffy chicks have an uncertain future. But there is hope for them. Genetic technology offers a lifeline for these charismatic birds. After giving Moss a health check, Andrew and Deirdre take a small sample of blood. DNA is extracted to map Moss's genetic code, part of a process called genetic rescue. What we're trying to do is sequence the genomes of all of the kākāpō, and that will give us a whole new range of information. It will completely transform how we do kākāpō conservation. With so few adult kākāpō left, inbreeding is already an issue. One symptom is that half of the eggs laid are infertile. Fortunately, DNA sequencing can help. It will also give us a full kākāpō family tree. That's a good sample. Thank you, Moss. Well, 
will know exactly how all of the kakapo are related to each other. And that will help us to prevent and to slow down in breeding. Kakapo have been here for tens of millions of years. You know, evolutionary wise, they fulfill a niche unlike any other species that we have. And it's important to save that. It, it represents something that we just have very little of. Most people would agree that we need to preserve animals like this, completely unique animals, which are like nothing else on Earth. And they're important and part of the biodiversity of the planet, and it's our duty to save them. When humans arrived in New Zealand, the predators they brought with them came very close to exterminating the kākāpō. A parrot isolated in New Zealand's evolutionary laboratory for millions of years, today faces an uncertain future. But new and developing technologies offer hope for this unique and beautiful bird. <laughs>